on problem 138. At a loading dock, each worker on the night crew loaded three-fourths as many boxes as each worker on the day crew. So that means that the boxes per night crew worker is equal to three-fourths the number of boxes per day crew worker. Fair enough. If the night crew has four-fifths as many workers as the day crew, so the night crew workers, this is the, uh, the number of night crew workers. That's going to be four-fifths times the number of day crew workers. Fair enough. What fraction of all the boxes loaded by the two crews did the day crew load? So how many boxes will the day crew load? The day crew is going to load the number of day crew lo workers times the boxes per day crew worker. And they want to know what fraction of all of the boxes loaded is this. So that will be the numerator. And the denominator will be all the boxes loaded. So all the boxes loaded are going to be the boxes loaded by the day crew. So that's the number of workers times the boxes per worker, plus the number of boxes loaded by the night crew. Well, that's going to be the number of night crew workers times the number of boxes per night crew worker. And to simplify this, if we could just substitute these variables with things that look a lot more like that, and lo and behold, we have easy substitutions. They tell us what B sub n is, the boxes per night crew worker, and they tell us what the number of night crew workers are in terms of the day crew workers. So let's just substitute. So this is equal to day crew workers times boxes per day crew worker divided by day crew workers times boxes per day crew workers plus what is the number of night crew workers? It's W sub n, but that's the same thing as 4 fifths W sub d. 4 fifths W sub D. And then what are the number of boxes per night crew worker? Well, that's 3 fourths times the boxes per day crew worker. Times 3 fourths times the boxes per day crew worker. See, the fours cancel out. Fours cancel out. And actually, we could simplify this. We can divide the top and the bottom by this W sub D times B sub D. And you get 1 over 1 plus. See, all of these cancel out, and you're just left with 3 fifths. 3 fifths. That's equal to 1 over, see, 1 is 5 fifths, so that's 8 fifths, which is equal to 5 over 8. And that is choice E. Next problem 139. A restaurant meal costs $35.50. $35. And, 50 cents. and there was no tax. If the tip was more than 10%, but less than 15%, so the tip was greater than 10%, but less than 15% of the cost of the meal, then the total amount must have been. So what's the range for the tip? 10% of 3550, well, that's just going to be 355. And 15%, there's a couple ways you could think about it. You could say it's half more than this. Right? What's half of this? Half of this is a dollar seventy seven and a half. Is that right? Yeah, a dollar seventy seven and a half. I think that's right. One seventy seven and a half. Really, I mean, you can't get a half cent. Is that right? Two times that, you get two, and then two times seventy is a dollar forty. Yeah, that's right. Right, so this would be 5%. I just took half of this. Something that's how people do it, half of 10%. If where you live, the tax is 10%, you could just take 50% of, well, anyway, I don't want to get into that. So let's see, if you add this to this, you get 4, let me go the other way, 5, 12, 13, and 5. So the tip is going to be between 355 and $5.33. I guess we could say. Right? And so the total bill, right? That's what they want to know. We just add both of these. So at at minimum you're going to pay See, what's this plus $35? So 35 50 and 355 5 10 9 3905 3905 and at the high end you have 35 50 and then you have 533 
and that is equal to three eight zero one four. Okay, so the tip so your total bill is going to be between thirty nine dollars and I don't know forty one dollars, and that is exactly choice B. They just round up. They say forty one is here and thirty nine is here. So your tip is if it's between these two numbers, it's definitely between thirty nine and forty one, and that's choice B. Problem one hundred and forty. In a weightlifting competition, the total weight of Joe's two lifts was 750 pounds. So L1, his first lift plus his second lift, was 750 pounds. If twice the weight of the first lift was 300, so 2 times the first lift was equal to 300. Oh, sorry. If 2 times the first lift was equal to 300 more than the weight of his second lift, so 2 times his first lift was equal to 300 more than his second lift than his second lift what was the weight in pounds of his first lift okay so we just want to solve for l1 so let's see the best this top equation we can rewrite as l2 is equal to 750 minus l1 and then we could substitute that here so then you get 2 times l1 is equal to 300 plus L2, which is this, plus 750, minus L1. Add L1 to both sides. You get 3L1 is equal to 300 plus 750. That's 1050. And 3 goes into 1050. See, 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 15. 3 goes into 15 five times, so it's 350. So his first lift was 350 pounds. And that's choice. D. Problem 141. A club collected exactly $599 from its members. If each member contributed at least $12, what is the greatest number of members the club could have? So at least $12. So the more that each member contributed, the smaller that the greater number the number of people in the club but let's see if each member contributed at least $12 so what is the greatest number of members the club could have so if they all contributed let's say they all they all contributed exactly $12 so 12 goes into 5 well this is a, 12 goes into 12 goes into 60 into 650 times right so if this number were $600, if this were $600, you could say, oh, well, if if you if 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 $600 were collected by in increments of $12, at least $12, then you could have at most 50 people, right? At most 50 people. But we don't have $600, right? $600 would be 50 times 12. We have $599. So this could be done Five hundred ninety-nine dollars can be done by at most not fifty people, but at most forty-nine people. Forty-nine people, and let's think about that. Let's make sure that that's right. So my answer is forty-nine, which is C. And let's think about how much money would be left over. So forty-nine times twelve. This is just a reality check. Forty-nine times twelve. Two times nine is eighteen. Two times four is eight. Plus one is nine. Zero. 49, 8, 18, 580, is that right? 588, right. So if you have 49 people and they all contribute $12 exactly, you'll raise $588, right? And then you could have had a couple of other people, I don't know, you could have had 11 other people who instead of $12, they paid $13, and that's how you get to 599, right? Because they say at least 12. You can't have 50 people, because 50 people, if they contribute at least 12, you would have to raise at least $600. So it can't be 50, so the answer is 49. And you, you might say, hey, Sal, how did you, you know, why did you go to immediately 600? And a lot of times on the GMAT, when they have these numbers that are you know, 12 and 599, those are strange numbers. You say, well, 599 is awfully close to 600. Let's see if I could use that information to deduce something interesting about this problem. Anyway, next problem. 142. 
Of the 3,600 employees of Company X, one third are clerical. So clerical is equal to one third times 3,600, which is equal to 1,200. If the clerical staff were to be reduced by one third, what percentage of the total number of remaining employees would then be clerical? Okay, we're going to reduce the clerical staff by one third. So how many people are we going to get rid of? So one third of 1,200 is what? It's 400. So the clerical staff is now going to be, sorry, it's now going to be 1,200 minus a third minus 400, which is equal to 800. So what proportion of, is this of the remaining employees? So clerical is 800. And how many remaining employees are there? Are there 3,600? Well, no, we've gotten rid of 400 employees who were clerical. So now we have 3,200 employees. All right, 3,600 minus 400. So that is equal to 1 fourth. 1 fourth, and that's A, 25%. Problem 143, 140. actually no, I'm out of time. I'll continue this in the next video. See you soon.